Proof of relationship. So one of the most common reasons why applications for spousal sponsorship for Canada get rejected is not being able to prove that your relationship with your partner is genuine. Whether you are married, common law or in a conjugal relationship, you need to show that your relationship with your partner is authentic. So in this video, we'll go over all the documents that you can use to make that happen. Whether you are living with your partner currently or have briefly lived with your partner in the past, this video will apply to you. We'll cover marriage certificate, financial support documents, joint history, photos, chats, social media posts and more. Basically all the documents that you can use to prove that your relationship is authentic. I'm also going to show you how to upload each of these documents if you are using the new online portal to apply. My name is Suyash. I'm a permanent resident of Canada. I got married eight months ago and just like you, I also miss my spouse. So let's get to work and bring our loved ones closer. Okay, so first step, get to this page linked in the description below. This is where you will get your checklist. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select spouse under who are you sponsoring, then country the person resides in. So in this case, we are going to stick with India, but select the country where your spouse currently is if it's an outline application. So I'm going to select India. Then it says, do you need to submit documents issued by another country? Passports, birth certificates, national identification cards and more. Yes. So we will select India again. Okay. And then click on get checklist. So you are going to get a document checklist spouse, which says five, five, three, three. Okay. So click on that and then download it. Okay. So this document checklist 5533E is also what you will have to submit along with your application. But this video is not going to be about this checklist. We are only going to discuss section seven of this checklist, which is proof of relationship. Okay. So get to page eight proof of relationship to sponsor. This is section seven. It has five parts. So we are going to cover each part of this section one by one and then we'll see what documents you have to submit. Okay, so let's look at 7a. Are you and your spouse currently living together? So if you check no, then you'll have to provide documents in both of these following bullets. So number one is proof of contact. This is where you provide letters, text messages, emails, social media conversations, other documented proof of contact between you and your sponsor. This is where your WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, Gmail chat history comes handy. Okay. So I have an entire video about how to export WhatsApp and Facebook chats and how to get them translated. Okay. So it's linked in the description below it should be showing up on the cards here. So check it out. All right. Then you will also have to provide proof of your sponsors visits. So let's say you, the applicant is in India and your spouse, the sponsor is in Canada and they have recently left India. Okay. Then you really don't need them to visit you back again so soon. Okay. They've just started the application. So then you're not going to check this box, but you will provide this explanation in IMM 5532 form part C question four. I have an entire video on this form linked in the description below. It's on my channel. So go check it out. Okay. But basically what I'm saying is this is my case. I recently moved to Canada in July, 2021. I got married December, 2020. I lived with my wife in India for seven months and then I just moved to Canada. So I really don't have any reason to go right away back to India. Okay. So in that case, I am going to list this as an explanation in this form. Okay. So if you've not visited your spouse for a very long time, you need to have a valid explanation. It could just be that the country your spouse is in right now just didn't allow any flights due to COVID. In that case, you can actually use that. Make sure to check with the government and make sure to check that your information is correct. If actually there were no flights allowed, then you can use COVID as an explanation. But if flights were running in and out of that country during that time that you were away from your spouse, then you cannot use that explanation. You will have to provide other reasons. Okay. Okay. So let's say you are living with your spouse, then you will have to check. Yes. And then you will have to provide these documents. Basically these documents are documents which have your and your spouse's address listed in them. Okay. So joint ownership of residential property, a house under your name, a apartment under your name, rental agreement showing both of you and sponsor as occupants. 
joint utility so electricity gas telephone internet bills with both of your names in those bills okay registered at the same address if you own a car then you and both your spouse have been declared to the insurance company as residents of the insured address or copies of government issued documents so if you get a photo card if you get a driver's license the address of you and your spouse should be the same or if you open a bank account together you are either listed as a nominee or you have a joint bank account okay so let me point something out if you visit your sponsor in canada on a visitor visa then it's going to be hard for you to get these documents it's not impossible but you will have to work a lot to get these documents rental properties will not be very cooperative to list your name in the lease of an apartment if they know that you are here only temporarily same goes for banks they are not going to list you as a nominee under your spouse's account's name if they know that you are only here on a temporary visa okay same goes for electricity gas telephone internet so my suggestion would be if you come here try to convert your visitor visa into a study permit or a work visa these visas tend to be longer once you have either one of these these companies would be more trusting in your resident status and it's going to be easier for you to get a photo card or a driver's license or list your name in the insurance of the vehicle under the same address okay and once you get a longer visa it's pretty easy to get these documents so there's six of these documents listed here you need at least two more is better but less than two is not going to work okay so the best thing to do is to list your name in the lease okay then get a joint account or have yourself listed as a nominee in your sponsor's bank account that will take care of two documents if you have a car then you can do the same thing with vehicle insurance and the easiest thing to do would be to get a photo card because it's going to take a lot of time to get a driver's license but it only takes about 3 weeks to get a photo card so get a photo identity card or a national identity card for your province with the same address as your sponsor and that should work okay so let's look at 7b do you and your spouse have children together if you don't just check no if you do then check yes and then what you'll have to do is provide a birth certificate for each child showing the names of both parents and if your child was born in canada then there's another process to get that certificate simply go to the website of your province there is a service canada center for each province and apply for a birth certificate it is that easy okay if your child was born outside of canada just get a certificate from the country that your child was born in okay it's going to help so get the certificate if you have a child okay next is this a first marriage so check yes if it is if it's not then you'll have to provide additional documents down the line d have you and your sponsor been married for a minimum of 2 years so if you've been recently married this is not going to apply to you so check no if you have been married for 2 years check yes now in this section if you check yes to all the questions from a to d if you check yes then you don't have to provide any other document you can move on with your application okay but if you checked no in any section then you will have to go to section 7e and provide these documents which we are going to take a look at next okay so let's look at section 7e if you did not answer yes to the questions above then you will have to provide these details and this is going to apply to a lot of you so you'll have to provide two of these details okay it's an and not an or okay so you have to satisfy both these sections so let's look at the first section photos of your weddings customary celebration engagement outings provide a maximum of 20 photographs to support your relationship taken at different times and places and then you have to write your name and date of birth on the back of each photo and provide a brief description okay so the thing about these photographs is for wedding or customary celebration photographs you will have to show at least four to five photos of each ceremony with the two of you and also other people around probably your family and friends that validates the fact that the wedding was publicly acknowledged and socially approved okay so that is important don't just attach photos of your outings with just the two of you while that is required but that is not going to be enough by itself provide photographs with other people around also attending the wedding ceremonies 
Okay, so let's look at some photographs. So for instance, this is me and my wife at our honeymoon. Just the two of us, we provided five photographs like this of just the two of us in our honeymoon, but that only satisfies the outing section, okay? It doesn't really take care of the ceremony section, okay? So let's look at that. So this is the photograph of the engagement. Just the two of us, while it's good, but don't just provide only photographs with the two of you, okay? You need to have people around. So this is an even better photograph because it's me and my wife and my parents in the wedding reception stage, okay? This is me and my wife about to make our entry into the wedding reception stage with other people around as attendees, okay? So this is a good photograph. This is me and my wife at a different wedding ceremony, also known as fere in the Hindu wedding, with other people attending, a good photograph. This is me and my wife on the reception stage with my wife's family. This is me and my wife at the garland ceremony with other family members around, okay? So you get the idea. The photos you provide of these ceremonies should have other people present and the photos you provide of your honeymoon can be just the two of you, okay? So that takes care of the photo section. Now, if you're applying offline, then you will print out each of those photos and on the back of each photo, you are going to write in your name and date of birth of the applicant and then the context in brief about the type of photograph, which means the ceremony that photograph was taken in. So a good example is name, date of birth, and then engagement one. Name, date of birth, engagement two. Name, date of birth, wedding reception one, wedding reception two, wedding ritual one, wedding ritual two, and so on and so forth, okay? And provide at least 20 photographs. Feel free to provide more, it doesn't hurt your case, but 20 photographs taken at different times and places at different ceremonies fit name, date of birth, and description about each photograph on the back. This is what you do when you apply offline. When you apply online, then a lot of people have asked me, how do I put the name and date of birth, okay? So it's pretty simple. Let me show you an example real quick. So let's take this photo of the garland ceremony. Now, if you're using a Mac, so what you can do is you can simply open this photo using the preview software okay so the way you do that is simply right click on the photo open with preview okay and then what you do is you click on this little circle with a pen inside which says markup and then you click on add text with an a in the box and a text box will pop up here this is where you simply write in name date of birth and context. And you simply slide it towards the corner of a photo and that should fulfill the requirements, okay? So for each of your photographs that you submit online, you can do this. Just write in your first name and last name, the date of birth of the applicant, remember and then the context of each photograph, all right? And then you simply upload these photos in the online portal one by one. Remember, you cannot merge all these photos and upload at once because the size allowed at the online portal is only four megabytes. By the way, if you don't know what an online portal is, there's a video linked in the description, should be showing up here on the cards here, so go check it out. So you upload each photo one by one, okay? And there's a section of upload photos. Just keep uploading these photos one by one. There's no limit to how many you can upload. So don't worry about merging all these and uploading at one section on the online portal. You can just keep adding photos one on top of the other, okay? Okay, so once you're done with the photos, you also have to provide documents from this list. Basically, it says at least two of the following four options and provide the documents requested for each, which means you will have to select at least two of these options, okay? So let's look at them one by one. 
Number one, important documents for you and your spouse showing that you are recognized as each other's spouse. So the obvious candidate is the marriage certificate. Get registered after your marriage as soon as you can and get a marriage certificate from your local jurisdiction or municipality where the marriage took place. And remember to get the certificate in English. If you get it in any other language, then you will have to get it translated and then you will have to get it certified. And then you'll have to use affidavits and notarized stamps and whatnot. So the best option is to get the marriage certificate in English with all the important information. Okay, so for the same option to prove that you're recognized as each other's spouse, another document you can provide is employment benefits. So if either one of you is working, list the other one as a nominee or a beneficiary under your employment benefits section. Okay, if neither one of you is working, then you can list your spouse or applicant as a nominee under the sponsor's account. That will also work in this case. Okay, next documentary evidence of financial support between you and your sponsor and or shared expenses. Basically money moving from the sponsor's account into the applicant's account. So you show the bank statements where money was transferred or wired from the sponsor's account into the spouse's account. If you've recently gotten married, start doing that so that you can get a decent history to prepare for the permanent residence application. Even a small history should do the trick as long as there is evidence of financial support. Okay. Another option you can use for financial support or shared expenses is having a joint account with regular activity from the spouse and the sponsor. So withdrawals and deposits being made from the same joint account by the both of you. If you can attach the history of that, that will also work here. Next, other proof that your relationship is recognized by your friends and or family. So this is where you attach social media documents. So if you've posted pictures of the two of you for wedding ceremonies or of your honeymoon on Facebook and Instagram, take screenshots of those pictures showing people commenting and liking those pictures and then attach those pictures in your application packet. Remember, the idea is to show public acknowledgement. So you will have to have comments and likes also present. So take your screenshots wisely. Next, proof of past cohabitation. Now, this one is an important one. After your marriage, even if you've lived with your spouse for a short amount of time, you can still use some documents. So as soon as you get married, update your passport or your Aadhaar card to reflect the same address. Most likely, this is the wife that is going to be doing that to reflect the husband's address. So as long as you have the same address on these documents, it will count. Also, similar address on passport and Aadhaar card or national identity document will make the process of getting PCC or police clearance certificate from India quicker. So definitely do that. Let's say you're not married, but you are in common law or conjugal relationship. If you've lived with your partner in the past for a significant amount of time, then you can still use lease documents, utility bills, phone bills, gas bills with the same name and address listed on them as proof. Okay. And another document that you can use is life insurance policy. So as soon as you get married, get a life insurance policy with the same address listed under both names. That will also work as proof of past cohabitation. If you have left India or your country and you are now in Canada and your spouse, the applicant is still in the other country, insurance policy reflecting the same address from your home country is also going to count as proof of past cohabitation. Okay, quick note. The motivation that I get to make these videos is actually from your interaction with the videos. The notes, feedback, suggestion, questions that you leave in the comment section is actually what motivates me to make new videos. Over the past few weeks, so many of you have reached out to me and shared your personal stories about how you are struggling away from your partner. I'm here to tell you that I hear you and you're not alone. We are in this together. Just get the forms right, submit all documents and don't be taken for a ride by greedy agents. Above all, keep faith. You'll meet your partner soon.